Settings dialog box controls a host of adjustments, something like 800 of them. And so I want to start right off by showing you a quick way to get to certain adjustments. If you right click here, items on the uh, status bar, you'll see there's uh, one named settings. If you click that, you go directly to the section involving, in this case, snap and grid. That's an easy way to get there. Similarly, you can right click eSnap, you get to the settings mode for uh, entity snaps. Settings for line types, and so on. Let's take a look at how the settings dialog box can let you control how entities are modified in BricsCAD. So I'm going to click on this plus sign to open the section on entity modification. And within the section, they are generally but not always in alphabetical order. So here, copy mode, uh, that is for the copy command and whether or not it repeats automatically as soon as you finish. Uh, that's currently the default, that's why it's shown there. And that means as soon as you end copying something, BricsCAD prompts uh, to make another copy. If you don't want to do that, then change it to create single copy. Notice how the text has gone boldface. That's BricsCAD telling you you've made a change to it. And so we have other things here too, such as when you're mirroring entities, do you want the text mirrored or not? You turn that off to not mirror it. Here with the chamfer fillet section, you can uh, define how chamfers are defined, either by two distances or by length and an angle across the chamfer. And down here in the preview area, you can see what the d differences are between the options. And then if you do, you can set change the defaults from zero to some other value. If you happen to use, say, a half inch chamfer all the time, then you can set the values in here. Similarly, you can set a default radius for the fillet. I like to have zero. That way it's good for trimming. Dynamic benching is a wonderful thing that lets you see the size and angles of objects as you're drawing them. You may want to have more information, less information, or even different colors, and the settings dialog box lets you do that. So here's the settings dialog box, and I'm going to use the search field to find the settings that correspond with dynamic input. So I'm going to type D-I-N, and then start clicking this arrow to find the next uh, reference, and there we go, dynamic input. So let me open up this node, and here we see the options. I'll just slide this over so we can read it. But this one's interesting, because I'm not really interested in a lot of this uh, information being displayed. I'm going to turn off extended length, relative angle. Here we have um, visibility. Now in this item you see it says DIN-DI grip. What does that mean? It refers to uh, how dynamic dimensions are shown, and you can see here DIN-DI grip is the name of that variable. These are the colors you can change. This is the distance between the dynamic input and the uh, entities being dimensioned. Now this here lets you change it, and I think I'll change it to dotted so it's not quite so obvious. Transparency of the input fields and dimension aperture, which is uh, looking for where entities are to, to be worked on. So let's close the dialog box and try drawing a line. And there we go. We can see that the uh, dynamic dimensioning line is now dashed and there isn't nearly as much information being displayed, just the absolute angle and the absolute length.